Hey Math 43, I wanted to create a like a problem of the day based on what I had seen in the Padlet and the answer garden. So we're gonna take a look at these um, sets of data. Again, I would always recommend that you read through this first, see how much you can do on your own and then come back to the video. But if you've read through it, you can see here that our variable is the number of pairs of shoes for these uh, this random sample of 20 female students and then we're gonna get another 20 um, of male. But this is a numerical variable. Oops, I can't spell numerical. Um, and it's it's numerical discrete. We would count the number of shoes that we own. Um, so so we have our data, and I gave you a stem and leaf plot, right? So we we've got this key over here, and you can see I actually went through and put all of this data into my calculator. Uh, keeping in mind that I needed 20 observations, I put my female data in L1 and my male data in L2, and you'll see that in a little bit. And here are just a bunch of stats I wrote down. I, I like to write these down, right? We've got the mean, the standard deviation, and then the five numbers of the five number summary for the men and the women in this samples or in these samples. So I, I did have a question on how does standard de how is standard deviation affected by the mean? and by the range. And so I wanna be clear that the standard deviation is not at all affected by the mean. We calculate the mean in any data set first. So on the female side, it's saying that the average, the average female in this sample owned about 30 shoes. All right, and then it, on the flip of that, the male average looked like it was closer to about 11 or 12. So that would be somewhere in here, the 11 or 12. Now, for every other, for every person in this data set, whether it's on the female side or the male side, they deviate from that mean. All right, and you can see if the mean on the female side is about 30, just looking at the max, you see that that deviation there is about 27 shoes. All right, and I could also compare it to the min, right? If we go 30 to 13, that deviation is about negative 17. And I say negative 17 because it's below the mean. So we have all of these deviations for each data value in our data set. And when we take that average, we find that the average deviation in this case is about 14.24. Or on the, man, the male side, it's about 9.42. So from mean, we get the standard deviation. You have to calculate the mean first and then use that to get your deviations and then ultimately your standard deviation. So the mean is not affected, excuse me, the standard deviation is not affected by the mean. And I would also say it's not affected by the range. That was another question I got. The range is just the scope or the difference between the low and the high. So if I was looking at the male data, the range here would be 34. If I was looking at the female data, if I subtract um, 57, and 13, uh, the range, I can do that in my head, would be um, 44. So the range here would be 44. Let me write this down. Range would be 44 here. Range would be 34. And they would, of course, have the same units as our variable. All right, so moving on from there, let's take a look at my first question. I'm going to erase some of the little markings I have here so it doesn't get too cluttered. The first question is going to ask us which set of students owned more shoes and justify that using an appropriate statistic. So when you see appropriate stat, you've learned a bunch of stats, like here are a bunch of them. You could use any of them, but you want to use the ones that are appropriate. So when I'm talking about who owns more, the things that come to mind in that case are, I, I think of the mean, I think of the median I could show, right? If I look at the mean, it was 30.5 here and only 11.65 here. I also see that the median is higher on the female side and also the max, right? I could see you using the max to justify that. So whichever stat you choose, that's great. You write it up as a sentence and you see this comparative language and I said also, you could have used the median or max in your justification. All right, the next question asks, which set of students had the greater set or greater variability? When you hear greater variability, variability when it comes to socks is that second S. So we have the spread we could have talked about, the range, the IQR. What else do we have? The standard deviation or the variance? And just looking at what I have, if I if I take a look at what I've calculated, I do have the standard deviation that I can compare. All right, I also, we went ahead and calculated the range. So those would be easier grabs for me. And that's how I wrote that up. So I said here, females have the greater variability as they had the larger range. Again, comparative language. But you could have used all of those other stats in your justification. 
All right, I also had questions about z-scores. How do you calculate them? So I said, hey, why don't we just calculate the z-scores for the highest and the lowest on the female side of things? And I could have done this on the male side of things. I just chose the female data. So we're going to have to keep these. Oops, let me scroll this. Actually, let me erase this and I will copy it over. All right, because we're going to want to keep those numbers in mind as we move to the next page. So as I move here, right, let me paste that so we can... Apparently we can't see it. Cool, that was um, me thinking I could do something neat and failing, awesome. Anywho, <laughs> says calculate the z-scores for the min and max for the female data. So if I look at the female side of things, right, my, oh, I just realized I, I will adjust this. This should actually say max and this one will say min. So I, I will fix that, I'm just noticing my typo. So this will put for the max, excuse me, and this will put for the min. So it's always value minus mean over standard deviation. So I would have 57 minus my mean of 30.35 in ratio to 14.24. And where am I getting these two numbers? Well. I had them here, right? I had 30.25 and I had 14.24. And again, my max was 57. So what that's telling me is for that female, she had 26 and a half more shoes than average, right? If the average was 30.5 and she was up at 57, she was above average. And her deviation, right? This is, this is that student's deviation. her deviation was actually more than the average deviation. So she was super deviating, which is fine. It happens. Somebody's got to be above average. And so she was actually almost two standard deviations above the mean. And when I say about this is about two standard deviations, right? If you think about if I doubled this number right here, 14.24, if I doubled it, it would be about 28. So she was almost two deviations above the mean. She wasn't quite. She was 1.87. All right, on the min side, you can see if we go back to our stem and leaf plot, that min was 13. All right, and that's below average. And this student, this female, she had 17 fewer shoes than average. And so she deviated, you can see in, in ratio to the standard deviation, her particular deviation of 17 in ratio to 14 is a little bit more than one. And it's negative because this student was below the mean. All right, the next thing I asked us to do was construct box plots, parallel box plots, two of them, and let's compare socks. All right, so the first thing you have to do anytime you want to make a box plot is get your safety zone. So if I find my safety zone, again, find the IQR, multiply it by one and a half, subtract it from Q1, add it to Q3, there is my safety zone on the female side. So you can see it was from negative 14 to 78. Now I'm going to scroll up. If I think about the max and the min, right, the min was 13 and the max was 57. All right, so if I head back down here, 13 and 57 are inside the safety zone, so I had no outliers. Now on the flip of that, think about how it looks for the male data from negative one to 19, all right? So let's think about negative one to 19 and go up to this male data. All right, so negative one to 19 is from about here to about here, right? This was the safety zone at least on the male side. So you can see I have three data values at 22, 35, and 38 that are outside of the safety zone. So I have three outliers. Okay, great. So I'm taking note of that, right? I have these three observations are becoming outliers. And then we're asked to make these parallel box plots. And I went ahead and I put them into my calculator and I, and I crunched the, or I got those box plots. I'm gonna show it to you on the app version in case you haven't seen that before, just so we can see what's happening. Now, keep in mind, I, I went ahead and I put all of my data into my lists. All right, I'm gonna go set up my stat plots. Let me see if any of them are on. No, they're all off. So let's start putting a couple of these on. I'm gonna change this to a modified box plot. I have my female data in L1, and I wrote every data value once, so I will keep that there. Um, here, I need to set up my next box plot. Oh, I do have it in L2, and I wrote every, all the males are in L2, and I wrote that. Uh, each data value once there. And if I look, I do have two different colors. It's one of the nice things on the app. Now the app's different. There's no zoom nine here. I'm just going to hit graph and you can see my box plots showing up. There they are. And I can see these three outliers here and you can see my whisker stops at the highest non-outlier. And just looking at the scale on the x-axis, it's somewhere between 10 and 20. We'll go check that out in a bit. But there are my graphs for my box plots. All right, so let me go back to my note thing here. 
All right, now where was this cutoff? That's what I want us to figure out, all right? If this is on the male side, I need the highest non-outlier. And if I scroll back up to my data, my highest non-outlier was right here at 14, right? Stem of one, leaf of four. So that means that this number here, let me scroll down, this one right here is at 14. All right, so there are my box plots. And then I can start to compare, right? And you see comparative language. I, I put it in bold. Both distributions are skewed right. Now, how did I get skewed right? Well, if I look at the median in relation to the min and max, here's from the min to the median, span that far. And then from the median to the max, span that far. That is a longer tail, so it would be skewed right. Same thing happening on the male side of things. Here's the median. And if I look at the distance from the min to Q, excuse me, min to the median, it's about that far. But if I look at the distance from the median to the max, and yes, we include outliers, it's that far, right? The right tail is longer. So they are both skewed right. All right. And then if I want to compare outliers, I had outliers in the male data, but I didn't in the female data. If I look at just the medians, you can see the median for the females is larger than the median for the males. And that's what I put here. And then you can also see that just in general, and I'll switch highlighter colors, look at how much more spread out the female data is when compared to the male data, especially if you start to take into account outliers. Like if you get this um, kind of, if you think that, the, or if you kind of ignore those for a while, you can see that the male data is pretty packed in there. All right. Now, before we leave, I just want to show one other thing that if we're talking about the shape and I want to go back to our original stuff and let me get rid of all of my notes so it's not as junked up in here. All right. Give me a moment. I do want to take a look. Oh, there's one more at, at the shape here. So let's say you are on a stem and leaf plot. If I want to look at the shape for the male data, right, you can see that the right tail is longer. All right. And I know you would have to kind of rotate your head and look at it so that the X axis went from low to high but you can see that that would be skewed right. Okay, now let's look at the female side of things. If we try and draw a curve over this and you kind of turn your head that way, you, you would say, oh, that looks skewed left, but keep in mind that the numbers are in the wrong order, right? Because when you move your head, then they're going from five down to zero, and then really they need to be going from zero up to five. So even though this looks skewed left, we would have to flip it, and again, we would get that it was skewed right. So I just want you to see that that is consistent with what we saw in the box plots. And also, another way to look at it is in each case, the mean is greater than the median. Whenever the mean is greater than the median, you have a skewed right distribution. All right, I hope that helps everyone. Thanks so much, bye.